guys, welcome back. It is your favorite game for We're going to jump back into some more A&A Arnhem. Uh, noticed a couple things in between some of the filmings. I've got a zoomed in way here in the corner where the Allied forces are coming in. And this is one of the mistakes I, I made, not with the game rules per se, but my understanding of the game. And that's the fact that the, the points you get as the Allies are from these units, the ones that are coming in, not the airborne units. The airborne units, I mean, they're good. They, they're there, they help out, but they're there just to hold those bridges open so we can have ourselves a nice little continuous path for these guys to push all the way as far to the left side of the board as they can, or however you set the, the map up, but they wanna to get to the top. So you have to race all the way across the board with as many units as you can. And it's the Germans idea to, to stop that. I don't know, I had a twist in my head that was just fighting all over the place. But no, of course, they're, they're going after these uh, bridges. So we've got to do some rolls here. I have one singular bridge that we're going to try to do now. We're going to pick up with the allies. They're going to do their their movement and everything we had just left off with their air combat phase. And one of the reasons I went ahead and started us up here is I've got two bridges right here. These are bridges that can be destroyed. Now I went ahead and rolled for uh, some of the bridges that I had crossed earlier and I'll point those out. Uh, they're, they're good to go, but I need to find out if these bridges are good to go and I need to get those friggin' Germans out of the damn way. So we're gonna do some moving here. I know I'm gonna be moving these guys across and hold on, we're not gonna move them first. I think I'm gonna move these guys first. So if I go two, three, four, five, yeah. I'm wanting to bring these guys around, this one around, attack into those Germans. Cause they're in the, oh, the city's a good defensible hex, but I need to get, some, that would be three on, four. oh God, the odds be against me. But if I bring them up too, I could hit them with a bunch and have some already hit them as well. So yeah, we'll probably do that, but I need to know if these bridges are good first. So let's, let's bring a single here. All right, so he's gonna attempt to cross and now I've got to roll to see if this bridge is open or not. And this bridge is opening at five. So these two guys will come around and they're gonna go to there. And I want him to find out if this bridge is open because I need to know what routes are open to funnel the troops. All right, and he got a five as well. So he is good to go, we'll move him up. And we're going to move these guys and the tank and the mechanized, which is the engineer. And you know what? I can have him just go ahead and go into this hex as well. And we're gonna have the Artie bring up the rear because he can't fit. So that'll be our first combat. We're gonna attack them from all sides. That's gonna be five infantry, a tank, mechanized and artillery bombing them from a distance, but supporting in the combat. We go there, but we gotta do the rest of our movement first. All right, you guys forgive some of these odd angles because this board's big, so I'm having to flick the camera all over the place. I do want to bring up some more infantry units to guard these bridges. Let's see, one, two, three, four, three, five, six. Same with him, and we'll bring him up here. This way I'm kind of guarding the bridges. All right, so there is a little bridge head here. I know this one's good. We've got our DZ and I want to keep this open for the guys going through. I don't think I need to worry about anything off in this direction. So I'm probably going to pull these guys back and kind of get them spaced around just in case there are, because I haven't looked ahead for the German deployments and I don't know where the Germans are gonna come popping in. So I'm kind of poking infantry around in different areas to guard against the, uh, the incoming Germans. Now, over here we have the 101st and I don't know where I'm gonna take, and again, like I said, I, I'm not 
planning it out yet. I'm not looking at where the Germans are going to come in from, so I don't plan ahead. So I'm kind of trying to put my units wherever I can. All right, I got to hold this bridgehead. So this road coming through here, right? is the way I'm thinking about coming, but it also depends on what bridges are open. This one is good. This one I haven't checked. And depending on if this one, I need this one to be good. Cause if it's not, then I have to check these down over here. Cause I would have to loop the units around. And once they get past here, that's when I start getting into victory point land. So it's all this area here that needs to be held. So I'm probably gonna pull these guys in the 101st and just kind of line them up to hold these bridges. Uh, let's, let's move him across. Yeah, cause he had to have come from here, this drop, which means I need to send him across to find out if that bridge is good. All right, is that bridge good? Yes, it is good, four. So I'll go across and we're just gonna park him in between these two bridges. I don't think I have to roll for the ones in yellow. I think it's just the square ones. I will check, but I I believe these uh, are permanent bridges that don't have demolition. It's just the ones that have the, uh, the square outline around them that I have to roll for. All right, so let's bring some forces in. And they have good movement because they got some movement points and they are moving along roads, which is half. So they can make all of these moves pretty easily. And we'll have him join up there. Now this artillery, I got to check. Ah, the artillery has the same movement value so they can scoot around as well. Let's bring these guys around. I kind of want to guard with this artillery this upper bridgehead because this is the direction like i said i want to take the units and funnel them and guard against any germans coming in but if this guy's here i can use him to uh to provide support to any combats that happen around this bridgehead and i think i'm probably going to keep these guys down over here guarding these lower bridges so i'll have a pathway no matter where i go so I'll pull them into this town for better defense. And he can go right next to him on the road. All right, that way. All right, so you can kind of see my goal here is to, to guard along all this roadway. That way they can make use of that half movement point cost value the whole way along. Now, again, that's gonna necessitate some of these bridges being open. Now I did check that one. So we'll mark it. So that one's good. And I don't think I've checked any of these others. Yeah, I haven't crossed there, 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 or there, but this is my main path anyway, so I should be good. I'm gonna have to double check on these yellow circled ones. Like I said, I don't think we have to roll on those though. Now, as far as these British fools up over here, I don't know what I wanna do with them because this river, that's the main one. I get good victory points by getting across this river, but I don't know where I wanna cross yet because the main crossing point is over here, but that's gonna be heavily guarded. There is another spot I can cross, but it's way up here and it's only one. And if that bridge happens to be blown, actually, is that, what type is that? Oh, <gasps> no. Okay, I was just looking, this one right here is the one I was thinking about the, uh, the second option, but that's a railhead and a railhead cannot be used for all types of units. That's a problem. That's a railhead. That's a railhead. That's a ferry. That's not going to work. Uh, so that does mean I have to take this city. This right here, these are the only areas that I am going to be able to cross with my heavier equipment. That's, oh, that sucks. Okay. Yeah, now I see what the Allies' problem was during the war. Uh, okay. Yeah, I'm probably going to have to screen forces here to keep the Germans from attacking down and then maybe build up some forces because without infantry being able to bunch up, right? I can only have two infantry in a single hex attacking. That's going to be a problem. Oh, 
oh, I can't really marshal a bunch of forces. I can get probably four infantry attacking, but again, that's only one point per. And then, the, you know, armor, uh, 88 mil, that gets its full attack value. Ah, uh, that's, that's going to be a beast. And I, I don't want to lose these, these British. I can hold off on the British for a little while, so I might let them hang for a little bit. All right, so I kind of reorganized the British into a more defensible type position all up and along this wall river, the, the main one that I got across for the uh, the victory points. Again, I can only have two infantry in a single hex, so I tried to keep some artillery uh, with infantry forces for defense, put infantry here into these cities that were the small little towns here because that's defensible against bombardment, and then make it to where the Germans are going to have to come up, but... Honestly, I'll probably hold back the British for a little while and then attack with them later when the 30th Corps gets closer. That way I can marshal my forces as much as I can. Now, that's unless I start taking losses to bombardment or air attacks. If I do, I'll probably have to, to marshal out with them and try to do what damage I can because I'm going to need these two bridgeheads that are way off over there. Yeah, and it's these two bridges. That's the only place I can really cross with my armor. Ah. All right, I've swung my tripod way back up here to the corner, and we are going to run this combat up here. Now, we are attacking with everything around here, and plus, they have nowhere they can retreat. These German units are probably going to get wiped out because they can't retreat into an enemy zone of control and there are enemy zones of control all the way around them. So they are pinned in and that's four units or four steps worth of infantry, the, the two units and the two rondels. Now let's grab our battle board. All right, so I swung us around to an empty side of the uh, side of the board so I could set this down. That way I could walk out the combat so you guys could see it. Now we have... We have five points of attacking infantry, and we have two points of mechanized. All right, let's see. We've got three from the artillery, the self-propelled artillery that is joined in, and the armor should be another three. No, no wait, that's heavy armor. Where's regular armor? Armor attacking, yep. And that is going to be another three coming on to it. Oh, yeah, that's perfect. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, no, I caught it. I caught it. Oh, almost made a goof there. Oh, that's a problem. Armor attacking city or town. I didn't realize they took that big of a, a ding. Uh, armor versus woods are broken. Armor clear mixed. Yeah. Infantry in the town are going to be nice and defended, so that's a problem. Our tank is not as good as we hoped, but we're still getting the artillery. And for the Germans, they should only have four total points, two for each of their infantry. So that should be our totals. And they do not get the modifier for woods, broken, rough, stream, or bridge. So it's literally just there for versus this one. So it's four, four, six, eight, 11. 11 versus four, and then we roll the D6s and add them. All right, so let's roll that beautiful beam footage. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's set it out here. This one goes meow, and this one goes meow. So the Germans got a total of six. That is going to give them a single hit. This is six plus 11 is 17. 17 puts us at three hits. Oh, one more, one more, man. Oh, if that armor had been a little bit higher or they have rolled uh, one lower. If they rolled, Yeah, if they rolled one lower would have made us a good difference as well. All right, so three hits hit uh, them. They got the one, so the difference is two hits being taken by the defenders. 
and they are going to have to take these as actual damage. Now, there are conditions applied down here where if you apply so many different hits, then they automatically get taken as actual step losses versus the uh, the ability to retreat. But retreats have to be legal and they aren't. So let's step back over there and see how they take their two hits. So with our Gemins right here, we will just take a rondelle off of both there, dug in like an Alabama tick right there. And they ain't got time to bleed, but that's all right. We will get them on the next one. And these are some points that we can apply. I am keeping track of this uh, off map anytime a step loss happens. I set it off to the side of the board. That way I can keep track of how many victory points are accrued. Uh, you are add in your victory points at the end of each turn. But honestly, I mean, as long as you keep track of how many losses you have, it really doesn't matter you know, when you count up your victory points, the big victory points are gonna come into play at the end of the game. Honestly though, these guys are doing what the Germans are, are supposed to do, because this is a whole turn I'm having to waste going after them rather than conducting combat. And see, they could attack back on their next turn, but why? There, there's no point for the Germans to attack, I would say, with any of their infantry because they get uh, so much uh, more of a, a bonus in the defense. Their power is doubled and they're in the city, which makes the armor weak. So I'm going to have to waste another turn attacking these douche nozzles on the next turn. We'll see, we're on turn two now, turn three. So it's not gonna be till turn four that I can actually start moving some of these damn units out and up the road. And that's no, not telling on what German reinforcements are gonna come in between now and then. And I know that turn three gets a fair amount of German reinforcements. Honestly, for the Germans, any turn that they spend holding my guys up is, is a victory for them because this is victory points I'm not getting because they're not being able to scoot up that damn road. Actually, I just realized that uh, I forgot I had this card. I'm gonna go ahead and play it. I forgot to use the uh, the German card, so I'll make sure to use a card to get some card play in it, but I get to re-roll a die for one defender in combat and pick the best of the two. So, uh, oh wait, no, no, no. This is determined defense. This would only be for my guys. I was gonna re-roll the, uh, the German's defensive die and hopefully get a one, because then it would be one extra step loss, but that's not gonna work. All right, so the Germans have their, uh, their move and combat phase, and I'm trying to think whether it would be a good idea for me to pop across here or get into this town with these Germans and hold this, because I don't want them to cross. Or I'm, I'm not going to take two and go down and attack the, the larger British force because that just doesn't make sense. I think it makes sense for the Germans in this to be largely defensive and do holding actions. But I'm wondering if I might be able to get them around somewhere and just get in the way, muck up the works. Because that could work if they crossed over here and then took this bridgehead or this trail all the way down. Because uh, they can't go that way. The... The damn British are blocking them off. You know what? That's what I think I'm going to do. We're going to move some of these Br uh, German guys across this bridge just because there's no reason not to. I could kind of get them in the middle here. That way, if they need to go up that way to hold off the, the American forces coming in, they can. Or if they want to come back this way because the Germans are holding that, they can come back here and block this bridge. So we're going to go and see. It's one half, one... And that's going to be what? No add MP, so that's going to be another two, so that's three, uh, four, five, six, seven. We'll just chuck them in the middle. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm going to leave him in this town just to prevent the British from coming up here and trying to hold this side of the bridgehead. This way, I've got control over a couple of uh, different directions. All right, and because, like I said, I think the Germans do better as a defensive action, I'm still going to leave those guys there because right now they're still holding those bridges, that town. They've got honor and locked down, and they're they're scaring the British. And if I move them forward on the attack, it can only go badly, I think, for the Germans. So we're just going to do some more bombardment. And I think we're going to target 
this hex right here because this is a town hex that gets a better defense against the bombardment these guys are in woods that's going to be a negative one it's going to be negative one pretty much targeting any of these british guys up here so we'll target those instead of these since that's the better modifier his combat factor for bombardment is a two so same thing just rolling on the uh the table and add two see so six he got a two. The Germans have rolled a lot of twos. That's going to be a four, so it's going to be, again, a no-hitter. That's all right, though, because like I said, the Germans, they've got Arnhem locked down, and they get a lot, a lot of reinforcements in turn three. All right, so that's going to end turn two. Now, for turn three, the Allies are going to get a bunch of stuff. They're going to get some more armor. They're going to get some more artillery, some more mechanized, some more recon, self propelled artillery. They get a lot of good stuff, right? But they're all coming in those same damn hexes. And right now I've got two idiot little German bastards who are holding them up. Uh, they're trails that I can go around, but it's going to slow down the British, the, the 30th Corps, and their allies on trying to move up. So that's going to be an issue. Uh, there is some more airborne artillery that is coming in couple infantry some artillery that's going to be nice that can be useful but that big butt here this is what the germans are getting now I'm, i know they get a lot on this turn but now i'm actually paying attention to it and they're going to get a good chunk of infantry some ss pioneers coming in another armor another 88 and that 88 is scaring the hell out of me right now whole bunch of infantry. Oh, some Fauschmeager are coming in as well. That's really cool. When these guys are coming in on a, a range of hexes, they can come in anywhere along this set of hexes. And I think that's going to be that end of the map over there. These guys are coming in these set of hexes, which is going to be back down towards the bottom. Yeah, there, there's going to be a good chunk of forces coming in. And honestly, I'm thinking, speaking of which, these two damn German forces way down over here, I forgot to move them because they're way here in the damn corner and I'm not paying attention. My plan is to bring them up and intercept the allied forces because they are, uh, they're down here. The allies are coming in in this direction. So they're in a good position to do that. Let me actually count that out real quick. All right, so these two German guys have moved up and just to show you, tilt the camera down, there's the British forces coming in and there's those Germans. I'm bringing them up to come up and be a pain in the ass to them because they need to come up here and intercept them on the side or they can come around and shoot over here and intercept them on the side or they can come over here and be a pain in the ass for the 82nd. And there's gonna be more forces coming in the same direction that these guys are coming in from. So the Germans are gonna get some backup and they're, um, my goal is basically intercept the, uh, the allied forces they're trying to move. And those two German uh, infantry divisions, man, they're, they're not really doing well in combat, but they're doing exactly what they need to do. And that's stall the forces that are coming in. All right, but that's where we're going to leave it for this one. Uh, I got to say, it's actually a lot more interesting now that I figured out a, a game plan rather than just try to sledgehammer it and smash the forces against each other. And now I know like what bridges I'm trying to hold one side and what like areas I'm trying to hold with the others. Because like I said, with the Germans, I think I'm going to go defensive. The, especially the fact that the infantry are so much more powerful defensively than they are offensively it's gonna give them that big advantage to just be able to take those towns and sit on them and just hold those bridges. Cause the uh, the allies, especially the airborne, are gonna be hard pressed to dig out 88s and armor with just infantry and some mobile artillery. All right, but you guys stay tuned. I will be back with turn three very soon. Y'all take care. I'll catch you in the next one.